Congressional Republicans are divided in their response to the indictment of Donald Trump in the Mar-a-Lago documents case. On the Senate side, you have Senator Mitt Romney saying in a statement, quote, Mr. Trump brought these charges upon himself. And South Dakota Senator Mike Rounds, who has endorsed Tim Scott in the 2024 primary. When asked about Trump's indictment, he told Axios, with Tim, I don't think you'll have those types of discussions. But on the House side, it's a different story. With House Speaker Kevin McCarthy promising that, quote, House Republicans will hold this brazen weaponization of power accountable. And Congressman Andy Biggs took things even further, tweeting, we have now reached a war phase, I-4-N-I. Joining me now, Tennessee Congressman Steve Cohen. He currently sits on the House Judiciary Committee. Congressman, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. We're looking at some unprecedented history right now. First, what is your reaction to the 49-page indictment of Donald Trump? I never thought I'd see a criminal case that made Richard Nixon look like a choir boy. Watergate was the worst thing that had happened to the presidency in our history when a president broke into the Watergate to find information on the other party and ordered that to happen, and then tried to cover it up. Uh, this is so much worse. Taking military and nuclear, which are military uh, secrets of the United States, illegally away from the White House, he asked for them to be returned, lie that they had been returned by him, lie again, and then hide materials and collude with his aides to hide materials from the federal government when they, after they executed a search warrant and before such, and to continue to do such. I mean, who knows what he still has? And he's known to be a, a transactional character who monetizes everything. He could have sold these. He could have used them for some advantage, leverage with some foreign government. Uh, to get something good for himself or for Jared Kushner or for his daughter or somebody else in his family. He, this is just astonishing. And it's the worst thing that's happened uh, by a president in history, the first president to be uh, charged with a federal crime. And at first in January 6th, he tried to overthrow the government. And now he's trying to sell the government out probably to foreign uh, governments or at least he's risking our government's security and safety by making these records uh, uh, available to people who could see them at Mar-a-Lago and, and show them to people, which he has done. And I think you know, Jack, uh, the, the Jack Smith has done a fabulous job. Uh, somebody compared him to Elliot Ness. I compared him to Sergeant Friday. Just the facts, ma'am. You know, Congressman Representative Andy Biggs, I, I brought his tweet up at the beginning of your interview. He puts out an eye for an eye. It's yet another example, in my opinion, of some really violent rhetoric that far-right Republicans are putting forth, encouraging political violence. What's your reaction to this? Because you work alongside these colleagues of yours. May not be the same party, right? But you guys are working in the same space, and this is the kind of stuff that's coming out of congressmen even after January 6th. It sickens me to hear it. It's really unpatriotic, and, and, and it morally, it's a violation of their oath to protect and defend against all um, um, enemies of the United States. Um, Trump is an enemy of the United States when he takes secret documents and makes them available by having them in his uh, bathroom and his uh, party room and you name it, and shows them to people. Uh, these, these secrets could get our soldiers and our... Uh, our CIA uh, agents, spies, whatever, uh, and, and jeopardy and cause them to lose their lives. This is espionage. And for him to be doing this is, is unfathomable. It's indefensible, unless you're getting paid a lot of money and you're guaranteed you're going to get paid, which is unlikely. Uh, it's indefensible. Everybody has a right to a trial. Everybody has a right to a jury. And you're innocent until proven guilty. And you got a right to counsel. But the counsel wouldn't be representing them except for a bunch of money. I don't know what the congressmen are getting. They're getting support from their district where they've got a lot of Trumpers and a whole bunch of maggot people who support them and put them in power, but they don't understand what's going on. And you hear it on talk radio, some of these shows, these people, a bunch of what, what aboutism, bringing up um, Hillary Clinton, bringing up other things. And, and that's no comparison. There's no comparison to what this man has done um, um, since, since uh, uh, the, the traitors in, in the Revolutionary War. Uh, Burr, Aaron Burr. Uh. 
Congressman, you are serving on the Republican-led House Judiciary Committee. Before I have to let you go, I wanted to ask you about a letter that Chairman Jim Jordan sent to the DOJ asking for, quote, all documents and communications regarding the Mar-a-Lago search. Is this just another attempt on House Republicans to interfere with the existing investigations that are being conducted by the DOJ? Our Judiciary Committee has turned away from promoting and protecting civil rights and civil liberties to defending Donald Trump and his team. And it's unfortunate that a lot of the people who were involved in um, these efforts to, to say that um, the whataboutisms and Donald Trump defenses on this, a lot of these are the same people that were connected with Donald Trump during January 6th, that they tried to hide the fact that they communicated with Trump on January 6th, that they were co-conspirators, and they have a lot to hide because they're afraid if Trump falls, Trump could get them to fall too, I think. So you've got a cabal that is not... Uh, They've been taken, they, they, they were right wingers, but they've been taken away from their duty and their oath uh, by Donald Trump. He has he's poisoned these people. He's done a lot of danger. And Michael Cohen can tell you what he can do to people that works work for him, because Michael went along with it for a long time. Congressman Steve Cohen, as always, thanks for joining us and for sharing your insight. I appreciate you. Thank you, Katie. I appreciate you too. Coming up after the break, I'm going to go one on one with Donald Trump's former personal attorney, Michael Cohen, and his predictions for how his former boss will handle being under a federal indictment. Keep it right here on MSNBC. Just hours after it was announced that former President Donald Trump had been indicted on federal charges in the classified documents case, two of his top lawyers abruptly resigned. Attorneys Jim Trusty and John Rowley did not further elaborate on their exit, other than saying it was a, quote, logical moment to do so. Our next guest has some firsthand experience being a member of Trump's chaotic legal team. Joining me now, former legal counsel to Donald Trump, Michael Cohen. He's also the host of the Maya Culpa podcast. Podcast, a co-host of the Political Beatdown podcast, the author of Revenge and Disloyal, and in his free time, the principal of the company Crisis X. Michael, my friend, let's talk, <laughs> ver let's just go straight to the meat of this, right? A lot of the key evidence in Jack Smith's indictment involves using Trump's own words against him. There's an excerpt on page 21, paragraph 54, which lays out Trump's incriminating statements to two of his attorneys, where he says, quote, I don't want anybody looking. I don't want anybody looking through my boxes. I really don't. I don't want you looking through my boxes. Well, what if we, what happens if we just don't respond at all or we don't play ball with them? Wouldn't it be better if we just told them we don't have anything here? Well, look, isn't it better if there are no documents? I mean, Michael, you and I have talked about the way that Trump would communicate with you, sometimes, you know, in the mafia style of dropping suggestions, insinuendo, in, innuendo and insinuations. Are you frankly surprised that Trump said something so damn incriminating? Yeah, because normally he speaks, as I've always stated, in mob code. This is not mob yeah. code. This is just plain stupid speech. This is Donald Trump basically telling them, I do not want you to go ahead and look through the boxes, because he knew what was inside, and he knew what was inside because he took it. Now, of course, everyone is presumed innocent, including Donald Trump, but... If you look at the totality of the information, if you look at the documents that he had, if you look at the trail, 18 months it took them to finally get back all of the documents. I mean, that looks like the Trump presidential library to me. But at the end of the day, if you think about it, this is, this is 18 months in order to get back everything including having lawyers lie in attestations stating that there was nothing left for him. That's where you have the obstruction, um, you know, case from. This is more than just an espionage act. Michael, paragraph 72 of this indictment indicates that Walt Nauta and others loaded several of Trump's boxes along with other items on an aircraft that flew Trump and his family north for the summer. Should special counsel Jack Smith be checking out Bedminster more so than maybe has already happened? So, Katie, you may remember, I said it on your show, I said it on Nicole Wallace's show, on Ari Melbourne's, on Reverend Al's, I've said it on every MSNBC show that had me on. 
you need to sort of play that game, where's Waldo? Except it's not where's Waldo, it's where's Donald and where are the top secret documents? Every single location that Donald went to from the time that he left the White House to today needs to be examined. And you may remember I said he needs to go to, say, Trump Tower here in New York, Trump in Vegas. He needs to go to Trump uh, L.A. He needs to go to his various different golf courses, to the kids' houses. Don, Ivanka, Eric, he needs to go to all of them because knowing Donald the way I do, there's no doubt in my mind, and I said this also, that he would use these documents almost as a get-out-of-jail-free card. He'll use it in order to extort America. Well, it came true. This is exactly what he's doing. You need to go to every single location. And the bigger question is not what did he take there, but who did he meet, who did he speak to, and who did he give some of this information to? You know, Michael, we also know that this indictment makes it clear that Trump, along with Walt Nauta, they duped Evan Corcoran, who at the time was his attorney. He remains his attorney, let me be clear. Evan Corcoran only recused himself from being in counsel on this Mar-a-Lago documents case, frankly, because he was subpoenaed to testify in front of a grand jury. Throwing lawyers under the bus is definitely not a new page in the Trump playbook, is it? No, it's not. In fact, at 12 o'clock midnight, Trump in an absolute panic. You may have seen on his Truth Social, all caps again, which connotes in Trump speech that he's angry, but it also connotes that he's nervous, that he's in a state of panic. And he starts attacking the Biden administration. He starts attacking the DOJ. He starts attacking the attorney general. And the reason why? Well, again, read my book, Revenge, you'll understand why, because that's what Donald Trump did during his administration. Donald Trump went ahead, he weaponized the DOJ using a willing and complicit attorney general. That's not what the Biden administration has. You know my criticism of Merrick Garland in terms of how mm -hmm. slow this is taken, but under Bill Barr, a willing and complicit attorney general acting as Trump's enforcement, went ahead and did every single thing that Trump is talking about the Biden administration doing. It's typical Trump deflection. Michael, we've got this arraignment coming up on Tuesday. You and I spoke at length after that Manhattan DA's office indictment arraignment where Trump looked scared. He looked pale. He definitely said, I feel like he had a come to Jesus moment, perhaps. What do you think is going to be going on with Donald Trump when he's going to a federal arraignment on Tuesday? Yeah, it's a little different than, of course, a state arraignment. Um, I don't know whether or not they're going to put him through. No, none of us know. There, you hear a lot of pundits making, you know, their predictions. I'm not so sure. He is a former president of the United States. Will they do a swab, a DNA swab? Will they take his fingerprints? Will they give him, you know, will they do a mug shot? Is it even necessary? I don't know. Uh, he should in my opinion, should be treated no different than anyone else. In fact, if he was treated the same as everyone else, this case would have been launched a long time ago. He would have already been indicted, um, you know, a long, long time ago, 18 months ago, and he would have already been convicted uh, a long time ago. Unfortunately, he's not the same as everyone, as a former president of the United States. But I will tell you one thing that Jack Smith and Merrick Garland and this DOJ is definitively showing all of us is that no one, and I mean no one, is above the law, not even a former president. You know, Michael, just to, you know, let you put a finer point on this, you're always called upon to be able to give your insight in terms of how your former client and I'd say friend, because you were with him for so many yeah. years, how he thinks and kind of how he ticks. He likes to put this Teflon Don kind of aura out there for public consumption that he really just doesn't give a you know what about what's happening to him. But it's not like he's 20 years old. It's not like he's got the rest of his life ahead of him. The dude's up there in age. What do you think is really going on in terms of how he's processing this? I mean, you talk about how he reacts in Truth Social, but he's going to be the last man standing if he continues to throw people under the bus and he's continuing to look at indictment after indictment. Yeah, you know, well, look, I just yesterday uh, had to go to the store and get rid of my frying pan because the Teflon came off that too. And it's coming off of Trump slowly but surely. But you are so right on point there, Katie. 
Donald will throw anyone and everyone under the bus in order to preserve his own freedom, in order to benefit himself. I think the DOJ should be if they're not already looking at the unholy relationship that exists between Saudi Arabia, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, and Jared Kushner. I mean, this whole two plus billion dollars to an unqualified, uh, you know, hedge funder makes no sense to me. And in light of the information that came out that there was military information on Iran, and we all know that Saudi Arabia has had, um, you know, Iranian aggression on their mind for a long long time. Who knows what was shown to them? Who knows what was discussed? Who knows what was sold? Uh, none of us. Uh, and I do believe that our law enforcement, because we have the greatest law enforcement in the world, they can find anything. And I believe that they will find a lot of information that goes outside of Trump, even though I do believe he probably had his hand in it, that he certainly knows about it. And chances are, if he had his hand in it and he knew about it, he profited from it. Michael Cohen, as always, I want to thank you for your transparency and for your bluntness. It's exactly what we need at this time. Thanks for being here.